Hello, um, it's been a while since I last did a video um, and um, I thought that um, I would um, start once again by showing you how to solve um, a Riccati equation. Now, um, a Riccati equation like this one here is um, a non-linear ordinary differential equation and for the majority of them, it, they're quite difficult to solve, um, and that's if, if you can actually solve them. Um, uh, the example that we've got here, dy by dx equals y squared minus x times y plus 1, is a relatively easy um, Riccati equation to solve. And the reason is that um, we can actually find um, what I think they would call a primitive solution to this equation. So a solution uh, such that, uh, and we'll write this down, um, a solution such that dy by dx minus y squared uh, plus xy uh, minus 1 is equal to 0. So that means um, if we can find a solution for y, these are the y terms here, if we can find a very primitive, simple solution, it's not the whole solution, but, but it's a kind of a very simplified, simple uh, solution for y, then we can solve this equation and find its, if you like, its general solution. Uh, so what I'm going to propose is that um, uh, we're going to let y equals x. And we're going to work out if this is a simple solution to this equation. So as you can see, if y is equal to x, then y prime is equal to, well, that, we know that's dy by dx, so that's equal to 1. Because the derivative of x is just 1. Now we can substitute y equals x and dy by dx equal to 1 into this equation and see what we get on this um, left hand side. And if that is equal to 0, then we know we've got a basic, simple, primitive solution. I I'm calling it a primitive solution. I don't know what other mathematicians would call it, but I know that it's kind of a basic solution, which is part of the overall general solution that we have to find. So let's try substituting in, um, substituting in y equals x and y prime equals 1 into, and um, we'll call this equation up here, uh, we'll call it equation one. So we're going to substitute um, x, uh, y equals x and y prime equals one into equation one. Okay, so um, let's just go on to another page. Right, so we've got um, dy by dx. Um, minus y squared plus xy uh, minus 1 and that's equal to well we know that dy by dx is 1 so we'll just write that in blue so we've got 1 uh, minus uh, y squared well we know that y is equal to x so therefore it's 1 minus x all squared plus um, then we've got the um, the x here on the that just stays as it, as it is so we've got x times uh, y again which we know is um, just x and that minus one there stays as it is so I've highlighted that in red, but we'll we'll keep it all in um, blue for now. So we find that this left hand side, the left hand side is equal to, um, and I'll change to black um, 
uh, black ink as it were. So we've got 1 minus x squared plus x squared. So you can see 1 minus x squared plus x times x, which is x squared minus 1, right? And um, there we are. So if we just, um, what we can see is um, that we've got 1 there, 1 minus 1, so those cancel, and we've got minus x squared plus x squared, or if you like, plus x squared minus x squared, they just cancel, and so the result is 0. The left-hand side of this equation is 0. That is precisely what we wanted. We wanted this left-hand side to be equal to 0 here. And so that's actually what we've obtained by substituting y equals x. So therefore, um, y equals x is a simple, I'm going to call it a simple solution to equation 1. I, 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 I have a feeling that other mathematicians might call it a primitive solution because it's, it's, it's a simple solution that's included in the whole general solution. Uh, now, to solve the whole equation, uh, dy by dx minus y squared plus xy minus 1 equal to 0, um, well, what, what we'll do is we'll just rewrite, we'll write that out again. Uh, so um, we've got dy by dx. I'm, I'm going to shift everything. Um, let's go back. Um, I'm going to shift the minus y squared, the plus xy, and the minus 1 equal over to the right-hand side of equation 1. So um, we've got dy by dx is equal to y squared. Um, plus, if I'm right, no, actually, it's a minus, um, x, y, uh, is it, just a minute, a minus x, y, yeah, plus one, right, okay, so that is our Riccati differential equation, and we know already that, that y is equal to x, is is a, is a primitive or a simple solution. We'll just keep that in mind for now, but we won't do anything with it. Now, um, if we put, I'm going to put this in red. So let y, so this is this value here, be equal to some initial, uh, very simple, uh, solution to this equation, which is y1. y1 turns out to be this x value here, but we're not going to put that in for now. Uh, we'll, we'll just do that at the very end. So we've got y equals y1 uh, plus 1 over v. So that, if we differentiate, I'm going to call this equation 2. So that equation two when differentiated becomes uh dy by dx equals dy1 by dx there minus one over v squared dv by dx right so now we've got um two equations here, equation two and equation three, which we can substitute back into equation one, essentially, which is what we've got here. Um, I probably ought to have called that some other equations. So, um, in fact, I'll just go back uh, just a moment. So let's get this right. So if I use the eraser, um, we'll go back to the red pen. We'll call this um, equation two. Sorry about the bleeps on my computer. I think there's some unstable connection 
that's, that's making my um, uh, computer make these noises. Um, but anyway, so we'll call that we'll call that equation two, that equation three, and that equation four. I haven't really got substantial notes on what I'm doing, so I'm just kind of doing it off the top of my head. So you have to bear with me if it if it um, sounds a little bit unpolished. Uh, so what we're going to do now, as I said before, is substitute equations three and four back into what we now call equation two. Um, and so if we go on to the next page, we've got dy by dx. I'll write this down again. dy by dx is equal to y squared minus xy uh, plus one. So uh, we know that dy by dx is equal to dy1 by dx uh, minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. And that's equal to y squared. Well, we know that y is equal to y1 plus 1 over v. And that's all squared. Minus x times y1 plus 1 over v uh, plus 1. And so if we multiply everything out on the right hand side, um, we'll get, um, let's change back to black. So we've got dy1 by dx there, uh, minus 1 over v squared, dv by dx. And that's equal to y1 squared plus 2y1 over v, because you know you've got your y1 here times 1 over v, and then 1 over v times y1, That's that makes 2y1v. And then, of course, we've got our uh, plus 1 over v, uh, well, we've got 1 over v all squared here, which becomes 1 over v squared. And um, then we've got here, if we multiply out the brackets, we've got x, y, 1, so minus x, y, 1, minus x over v plus one right now so what we have to recognize is that and i'll do this in green so uh we can see that dy1 over dx has to be equal to y1 squared uh minus x y1 um and let me see. So we've got the plus one there. So dy1 by dx is equal to y1 squared here uh, minus xy1, all of this, this term here, plus one. So that... If we substitute this um, in for the left-hand side, uh, alternatively, you could substitute in dy1 by dx for this term, this term, and this term, all added together. Um, it doesn't really matter which way around you do it, but basically, if we substitute dy1 by dx so let me go back uh previous right minus one over v squared dv by dx so the right hand side can be rewritten as well this y1 squared minus x1 uh, sorry minus xy1 plus one can be written as dy1 by dx right so we've got dy1 by dx so we've just eliminated um this y1 squared minus xy1 plus one and what we're left with is um the minus one over v squared dv by dx equal to 2y1v uh, plus 1 over v squared, because all of, uh, let me just 
go to this. So basically, um, we've got um, 2y1 over v plus 2y1 over v. Uh, that's that term there, plus v 1 over v squared. Right. And then we've got a minus x over v. Minus x over v. And what I wasn't explaining very well before was that um, basically this dy1 by dx cancels with this dy1 by dx. And all that you're left with is the minus 1 over v squared dv by dx equal to 2y1 over v plus 1 over v squared minus x over v. Um, we can simplify both sides of the equation by multiplying by v squared, both sides of the equation by v squared. So that gives us dv by dx, it's actually a, a minus dv by dx, equal to 2y1v plus 1 minus xv. Um, so we'll just change the, um, the signs on both sides of that. So that becomes a plus, that becomes a minus, that becomes a minus, and that becomes a plus. So um, let's go on to the next page and rewrite that equation out. So we've got dv by dx. Uh, previous, what do we have? Uh, we have equals xv. xv. Uh, minus 2yv. Um, now that's a minus one, isn't it? Minus one. Okay. So um, we'll we'll just simplify this um, a little bit more. So we've got dv by dx is equal to x minus two. Well, to simplify um, this. We we'll call this. Um, let me see. What equation shall I call it? I'll call it equation five. So uh, this is equation five, right? Um, let's just um, um, let's just write this. So we know, well, we'll keep that in red. We know that y equals x is a simple solution and i think that should be yeah it should be y1 shouldn't it so let's just write that in y1 um y1 equals x is a simple solution so i'll write this in green now so we've got dv by dx let's just uh Right, so we've got dv by dx is equal to xv minus 2 times x times v minus 1. We we'll call that equation 6. Uh, simplifying, we get dv by dx is equal to, well, what's xv minus 2xv? Well, that comes out to be minus xv. Because if you think about it, um, so let's write it in blue. So that's xv minus 2xv minus 1, right? So xv minus 2xv is minus xv, and there we've got a minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this in a different form now. Um, so we'll call that um, equation 7. Uh, so we've got... Um, dv by dx, and that's plus xv, plus xv equals minus 1. 
Right. So, how do we solve um, this type of equation? So we've got seven, we'll call this equation eight. Uh, well, for this type of equation, in equation eight, we can find an integrating factor. So that is um, equal to e to the integral of something dx. And um, what, what, if, if you are solving these equations at this level, you should know what the function is that you substitute um, in, in this part here. Um, so without going over um, the theory about using integral factors, you should recognize that the function to substitute inside the integral sign is x. So it's x dx. And that integrates to give e to the, in fact, actually, we don't need the integral sign there. So that integrates to give e to the power x squared over 2 and that's your integrating factor this so if we multiply um e to the x squared over 2 by dv by dx plus x v e to the x squared over 2 and that's equal to minus e to the x squared over 2 we get that so what we've done there is to multiply both sides of equation 8 by e to the x squared over 2. So you should recognize that, and I'll write this in blue, the left hand side can be rewritten as d by dx of um, v e to the x squared over 2. And um, that's equal to minus e to the minus x squared over 2. Now, I'll just go over this, this bit here. We just, just refresh your memory, um, indeed, if, if you need your memory refreshing. So, uh, basically, d by dx of v e to the x squared over 2. If you, if you differentiate that out, you should get, well, we leave the v alone and different, well, let's um, difference, uh, let me see, what, what do we have? Uh, okay, so leave the e to the x squared over 2 alone and differentiate the v. So you get e x squared over 2 dv by dx, and then you have to um leave the um leave the v alone and differentiate the e to the x squared over two so you get plus v and the derivative of x squared over two is just two x over two um and then you're left with the e to the x squared over two and of course, that comes out to be e to the x squared over 2 dv by dx uh, plus uh, vx e to the x squared over 2. So we know that this is equal to this. Um, so therefore, yes, this. This term here, all of these terms here are equal to this. So we're on the right tracks. I'm going to write equation 10 out again, and we'll just give this the label of 10. So I'm going to write equation 10 out again. So we've got um, the, oops, let's just. Uh, get some black ink on there, dv by dx, and I have to remind myself, uh, so it's d by dx of v, uh, let's just rub that out, uh, just a minute, no, let's just erase that, there we are, wasn't behaving itself for a moment, so d by dx of 
uh, I have to do mine myself. V e to the x squared over 2 is equal to um, minus e to the minus x over 2. In fact, actually, that is wrong. That should be a plus, shouldn't it? Because that was a plus. We were multiplying by e to the plus x squared over 2. So I'd made a bit of a mistake there. Uh, fortunately, we've seen it in time. So anyway... Uh, that's equal to minus e to the x squared over 2. And um, if we integrate both sides of this, so integrating, we get v e to the x squared over 2 equals uh, a constant of integration, which we'll call c1, minus... And when you integrate, um, we'll write it down. We'll actually write it down before we write down what the integral of e to the x squared over 2 actually is. Um, this component here is equal to uh, root of pi over 2. And I'll just double check that. Uh, root of pi over 2 times the imaginary error function of x over root of 2. So that's what this, this component is here. And the c1 just stays in there. And we've got v um, e to the x squared over 2 equal to all of that on the right hand side. Now, we just have to simplify this a bit more to get v on its own. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by e to the x squared over 2. So we've got v equals c1 minus the square root of pi over 2 times the Complement, uh, sorry, the imaginary error function of x over 2. Just check I've got that right. Yeah, I, I put a capital E there, but I don't think it really matters. Let's just, um, let's just uh, be consistent. Right, complementary error function. Right, so divide all that on the right hand side by E to the x squared over 2, right? And so um, we know that um, y1, uh, in fact, actually, we know that our general solution, y, is equal to y1 plus 1 over v. If you remember, Right back at the beginning, uh, where are we? Uh, we have equation 3 here. y equals y1 plus 1 over v. So we need to use that, and we've got it here. y equals y1 plus 1 over v. Um, let's just um, make sure we've clicked on uh, the right nib. So we've got um, v equals uh, c1 minus the square root of pi over 2 times the imaginary error function of x over root 2 um, divided by e to the x squared over 2. Now we know So we know that a false solution is given by the expression y equals y1 uh, plus 1 over v. Uh, so we need to basically substitute uh, y1 equals x, or well, we substitute x in for y1. And we substitute 1 over v, 
Now, how how do we find out what 1 over v is? Well, if you look at this expression here, I'll just call it star for now. I can't remember what the, um, the label for the last equation was that I wrote down. But if we just call this equation star, then we can easily find that 1 over v is equal to e to the x squared over 2 uh, divided by c1 minus the square root of pi over 2 times the imaginary error function of x over the root of 2. Right, so now we substitute x for y1 and all of this complicated looking fraction in for 1 over v. So that what we get is um, y, I'll just write this, I'll just rewrite this down again. So y is equal to y1 plus 1 over v. It's easy to see if we've got uh, the expression right there. So um, we know that y1 is equal to x, so we've got y equals, well, this y1 becomes x plus uh, 1 over v, which is, um, perhaps I ought to uh, change colour at this stage. Um, so this is our uh, 1 over v term. Right, so if we substitute that in for our 1 over v term here, then we've got e to the x squared over 2, all divided by c1 minus, uh, let me see, the square root of pi over 2 times the imaginary error function of x over the square root of 2. And that is the solution. So we write it down is the general solution to dy by dx equal to y squared minus xy plus one, whoops, that's a plus, right, let's just, there we are, plus one, okay, um, so uh, that is basically um, the solution to that um, first order um, non-linear Riccati equation. Um, and uh, I'll just outline that in red. So basically, um, I verified that with um, some mathematical software. So um, I'm confident that there should be no mistakes in that, and that is the solution. So I hope uh, the, that that you've enjoyed that, and uh, please do uh, come back and seek out. Uh, more of my videos. Um, I will hopefully be putting some more up at some point in the future. Uh, so do keep tuned, uh, tuned in. And um, I'll bid you farewell for now. Um, until next time, goodbye.